This week on Storyboard, we are in conversation with Chuk Chang, CEO of Denso Creative Asia Pacific, on how the agency is accelerating its creative footprint to become more future ready. And ahead of Children's Day, we caught up with Nina Elavia Jaipuria, head Hindi Mass Entertainment and Kids TV Network, and Anu Sikka, head Creative Content and Research, Kids TV Network, YCOM 18, on creating homegrown IPs in the kids' genre. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. I'm Chibani Gharad. We are in conversation with Chuk Chang, CEO of Denso Creative Asia Pacific. He was visiting India this week along with the entire Denso APAC top brass. That is how important India market is for us, he says. Since taking on his new role earlier this year, he mentions how the entire focus for the agency is on doing great work. He also shared how the agency is investing in its creative reputation and accelerating its creative footprint to become more future ready. The complete integration of Densu is all set to happen by the end of this month. So we will have to wait and watch how the future unfolds for this agency that has been through a lot over the past one year. Till then, let's hear this conversation. Chuk, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, Chuk, you are the newly appointed CEO of uh, Densu Creative for Asia Pacific. What has been your immediate mandate since June when uh, your appointment happened and how much has been achieved so far? When I got appointed the role, I sat down with Fred Levon, who's our global chief creative officer. And he said to me, we have one priority hmm. and that priority is the work. I went on a mission. Hmm. I spoke to our CCOs, I spoke to our CEOs, I spoke to many clients. And out of that, we've come up with a plan, and that plan is delivered across people, hmm. process, partnerships, hmm. and also promotion, reputation. Hmm. Across all of those four areas, the goal amongst each of those areas is to help us deliver better work. Hmm. So for example, with people, hmm. um, a big part of that is, unlike any other industry, hmm. in our, uh, our, our industry, hmm particularly the creative industry, relies hugely on talent. Yeah. So if you think about Dentsu as a whole, we have mm. three particular service lines, mm. creative, media, and CXM. Yeah. CXM relies, because it's data, mm. relies a lot on process. Mm. Media mm. relies on process and people. Mm. Creativity mm. relies a lot on people. Yeah. So off the back of that, we've done a wholesale review of all our talent, particularly mm. across the top six markets. Mm. And then we've looked at bringing in new talent that mm. can help us ultimately get to mm. that objective of better work. Um, and then we've looked at process. Mm. Uh, what, what's clear to us is we've moved from many brands mm. into one. Mm. So I've been working very closely with the global team. Mm. We've come out with a new creative briefing format. Mm. Um, the exciting thing about that format, hmm. um, which makes it different, is rather than focusing on propositions, which most creative briefs are focusing on, we're focusing on pr provocations. Hmm. So it's about taking insights, powerful human truths, hmm. and then articulating them in a way that's provocative. Hmm. That's how we make our propositions. Can you, can you uh, uh, tell me an example of that? Many insights that surround the Dove campaign. The category insight is, for example, sex sales. Mm. It's the beauty category, right? Um, when it comes to the consumer, mm. the insight that that campaign plays to very well mm. is that when it comes to beauty, women are their own worst enemies. Correct. So hence, mm. that's why the Dove campaign is so powerful because they've used that insight but expressed in a very provocative manner. Mm. Um, and then when it comes to partnerships, hmm. um, the focus is going to be on, in every market, setting up account plans with our clients. Hmm. Now, that's not to look at commercials. Hmm. That's looking at working with our clients hmm. to change the narrative. Hmm. And that narrative is really around how can we help them do better, more hmm. creative work. Hmm. The other partnership thing we're doing is really leveraging our partnerships with some of the big platforms like Meta, hmm. and Google, ByteDance, TikTok. Hmm. So what we're doing with them is we're setting up these joint business plans. Hmm. Um, we're doing a number of things with them. 
we're setting up a lot of one off initiatives mm. um, and we're partnering with them to launch a lot of the new products and tools that they've got. Mm. And in fact, in India, mm. um, with YouTube, mm. uh, we're partnering with them to do a lot of work with their new YouTube format next year mm. with Place the E-commerce. Mm. Um, and then finally, on the promotional front, mm. I think the thing that we've been is um, everywhere previously mm. and we've got to be very focused on um, how we communicate. We want to be known as experts in terms of creating culture, changing society, and inventing the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, you said the new date for this entire integration and formation of Densu mm -hmm. Creative is set for November twenty eighth. It will be formed uh, with you know these sprawling set of agencies that you have, which are brands in their own individual rights. How are the cultures merging, and how are people? which are your core for Densu Creative, how are the people taking the whole integration? To your question mm. on the various cultures, the other thing we also took into consideration mm. was how can we leverage the very best of what we've got now? Mm. In many respects, the heritage of Taproot mm. has very much been around building brands and creating culture. Mm. If you think about Brands like Isobar mm. have very much been about inventing the future and mm. leveraging technology. Mm. If you think about changing society and inventing the future, mm. you think about brands like Web Chutney. Mm. So in many respects, what we've done is we've taken areas of strength in what we've got mm. to then build out the blueprint for the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so finally, uh, we can say that this entire exercise is over or it's still ongoing? Externally, a lot of people who have looked from afar hmm. at what's been happening at Dentsu, particularly with a lot of the people that we've exited hmm. and thought that there must be something going on at Dentsu hmm. that's not positive. Hmm. The way we like to look at it hmm. is that we've been bold enough and brave enough hmm. to step away from legacy structures, hmm. think about how we can plan for the future. Hmm. how we can structure for the future, hmm. how we can structure to be client-centric. And hmm. that's why we've done what we've done. Hmm. So if you think about the proposition hmm. of Densu Creative, it's around what we call modern creative. Hmm. So modern creative is hmm. work that creates culture, changes society and invents the future. Hmm. So what we've done is we've looked at our structure hmm. and we've embedded the ability for us to generate work that delivers against modern creativity. So as an example, mm. um, one, thing, one interesting thing is that when it comes to insights, mm. particularly cultural insights, mm. we've had teams that have sat in media departments. Mm. Interestingly enough, over the last 30 years, it's been very rare for a creative agency mm. to have insights or data teams sitting within their business. Mm. So we've made some structural changes. Mm. We've brought cultural insights specialists mm. in mm. and sit in the strategy team mm. to help uncover these cultural insights yeah. to help us generate work that delivers yeah. against that. What is the difference or similarity uh, when it comes to uh, the India market as compared to the global markets uh, from a creative business perspective? It's, it's really India's time now. Mm. We've always had a very strong heritage of great creativity here, right? Mm. But um, gotta got remember that this is the first time that India has really shone in the way that it should be in Khan. Mm. I think that the quality of work is at the right point now. Mm. And for us, that's what's inspiring for the rest of the world. So I would say the quality of the work is, is much better. Mm. Yeah. Um, every market has its, has its time, right? You know, New Zealand for a long while, Thailand for a while, had had mm. great work. I think now in this in the, at this time, it's now India's time to shine. Yeah. And what are the things that excite you? Uh, you know, as a leader, uh, about the creative business in the coming days. For me, it's really the ability for us to leverage the data mm. um, to then create narratives, mm. um, but not in the way that we've done before. Mm. We've always had data, hmm. we've always had research. In fact, in the old days, we, a planner would have hmm. a pile of research hmm. reports that they would look at. The beauty of today is hmm. that we've got big data hmm. and we've got 
technology and machine learning mm. to help us analyze that big data, mm. to uncover insights, particularly cultural insights with Ensu, mm. to then better connect with consumers and inform our thinking. Mm. I think that's where the next wave is going to be. Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, the integration of Dentsu Creative uh, and the formation of Dentsu Creative is going to happen towards the end of November, Juk. Where will it stand as compared to these legacy traditional creative agencies which are really strong in the India market? There's something that Dentsu has that is quite unique. Hmm. Primarily driven because of the, driven by the fact that we've made more acquisitions than any other holding group hmm. in the last 10 years. Yeah. What it's allowed us to do is build strong capability across creative, across media and across CXM. So when a client works with us, the solution may not just be a content or a creative solution. Hmm. It could be a solution that's driven by data or a hmm. solution that is a very strongly media driven solution. Hmm. So. I'm very excited by that because what it means is the canvas that we've got to work on mm -hmm. is much broader than just creative. Mm -hmm. And what will be the key focus areas for this uh, Dentsu Creative in the next year since it's happening a little shy yeah. from the new year? There is a plan in place that looks at how we can drive growth, mm -hmm. of which there are three horizons. The first horizon is incremental revenue growth. Mm -hmm. And that's through <clears throat> on selling mm -hmm. capabilities capabilities that help clients solve problems. Hmm. Um, and really they are within three areas. Hmm. One, entertainment. Hmm. Second area of experience. And hmm. the third is owned. Hmm. The sec second horizon of growth is going to be new clients and new logos. Hmm. So that there's a renewed focus on taking a hunter mentality rather than hmm. a farmer mentality. And then the third area is really around strategic growth, hmm. which is strategic acquisitions. We either build, borrow or buy to build out our capabilities. All right, Chuk, thank you so much. Thanks for joining yeah, thank us you. today. Thank you so much. Namaste. It is now time for a short break. On the other side, ahead of Children's Day, we caught up with Nina Alavia Jaipuria, head Hindi Mass Entertainment and Kids TV Network, and Anu Sikka, head Creative Content and Research, Kids TV Network, YCOM 18, on creating homegrown IPs in Kids' Genre.